Apple just cancelled the iPhone 15. At least, the best model we were supposed to get. This was supposed to be the one with the huge redesign, major camera upgrades, no notch, and maybe the return of Touch ID onto the screen. But according to Apple, they're still gonna call it the best iPhones we've ever created. What exactly happened to the iPhone 15 line this year, and why did Apple cancel their best phone? Let's have a frank and honest discussion about the state of the iPhone right now, and why the true Android killer, this amazing iPhone, that we all want is probably never gonna see the light of day. Over the past several years, each new iPhone unveiling has followed a familiar pattern. This isn't to imply that Apple's events or the iPhone itself are lacking, but many of us have envisioned incredible possibilities for the iPhone, especially the Pro models. It's frustrating that Apple appears to have made minimal changes, despite the potential for so much more. Externally, the differences between the 11, 12, 13, and 14 have been rather minor, gone to the days of major overhauls and impressive new functionalities. Instead, Apple seems to be focusing on slight adjustments, perhaps assuming that these changes will go unnoticed or unappreciated. What exacerbates the frustration is that this year was anticipated as a turning point for the iPhone. We were looking forward to a significant redesign, perhaps a nod to the iPhone 4's iconic style from 2010. Anticipated improvements included substantial camera enhancements, the potential removal of the notch with a sleeker design, the elimination of the dynamic eyelid, and the potential resurgence of Touch ID. For years, the rumor mill churned with excitement, building up to a major transformation that was expected this year. However, the reality with the 15 series, particularly the 15 Pro, is not that they are bad phones, but rather they leave much to be desired if you were hoping for more substantial advancements. The primary narrative surrounding the 15 lineups appears to be a continuation of the status quo. Across all models, the shift from Lightning to USB-C, integration of Dynamic Island, subtle camera enhancements, discrete under the hood improvements, the potential introduction of fresh color options, a potential minor refinement in design, and the potential addition of a programmable mute button to the pros are the noteworthy updates. These alterations offer a certain level of enhancement, although they might not be deemed substantial, particularly for those anticipating more exhilarating innovations. Curiously, Apple seems to be maintaining a tight grip on their plans, refraining from significant leaps that leave many of us puzzled and inquisitive about their rationale. Various rumors, however, hint at grandier schemes for the iPhone 15 Pro in the current year. There were initially prospects of significant enhancements, perhaps even a substantial redesign. Apple seemingly harbored more ambitious aspirations for this device, ones that could have injected greater excitement into the mix. Regrettably, these plans have been shelved, leading one to speculate about Apple's strategic direction, especially concerning their Pro lineup. An examination of Apple's historical trajectory reveals that this cautious approach has not always been their modest operandi. During the early stages of the iPhone's existence, Apple was committed to delivering awe-inspiring updates on a benign basis. Consider the transitions from the 3Gs to the 4, the 4S to the 5, and the 5S to the 6. Apple consistently introduced major redesigns with subtle under-the-hood enhancements, providing us with renewed experiences each time. However, the landscape has somewhat shifted in recent times. While I don't propose an annual overhaul, even a perennial major redesign would be greatly appreciated. I hold a deep fondness for Apple's previous approach. Curiously, the company seems less inclined to follow that path nowadays. For me, the quintessential illustration of the iPhone's potential emerged in 2017, a groundbreaking year where Apple truly excelled on all fronts and established a formula worth replicating. This was the year that introduced the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus. While these models retained a familiar design and featured Touch ID, they boasted improved cameras, wireless charging, and various enhancements that rendered them exceptional choices for the majority of users. It marked a commendable year for iPhone upgrades. However, the pinnacle of transformation arrived with the iPhone X. It unequivocally represented Apple's premium flagship, uniting the company's most advanced technologies into an innovative masterpiece. The iPhone X unveiled an entirely fresh design, introduced Face ID, big adieu to the home button, and showcased an OLED display. This iteration introduced a multitude of groundbreaking features, positioning it as a professional-grade device tailored for enthusiasts and those willing to invest a bit more. In essence, the year 2017 epitomized Apple's impressive stride forward and underscored the iPhone lineup's untapped potential. 
It serves as a compelling benchmark that Apple should strive to emulate, leveraging its success as a guide for future endeavors. Indeed, the cost was substantial, though in today's landscape, $1,000 has become fairly typical for a premium smartphone. Yet, the iPhone's allure lay in its unique blend of consumer-friendly excellence and the 8 Plus's enhanced capabilities, catering specifically to discerning professionals willing to invest. The iPhone X emerged as a remarkable flagship akin to a prized golden unicorn, setting itself apart through myriad exceptional attributes. Speaking as an avid Apple enthusiast, I must confess that this marked one of the recent years etched in memory where the iPhone evoked genuine excitement. Despite the pre-release speculations and leaks, the unveiling of a novel design was exhilarating, underscoring the sheer novelty of acquiring an entirely fresh device. While I don't anticipate Apple perpetuating this level of innovation annually, or even benignly, I hold the belief that every three to four years, a momentous iPhone launch should grace us anew, much like the prospect I envisioned for this year. Imagine a scenario where the iPhone 15 and 15 Plus emerge, both impressive in their right, a dynamic evolution featuring a 48 megapixel primary camera, a refined design, and the incorporation of USB-C, all at the prevailing price point. Yet, the true apex lies in the 15 Pro and Pro Max models, where Apple unleashes its full creative prowess. These iterations boast a redesigned aesthetic, reimagined notch architecture, superior camera enhancements and an area of advanced functionalities, embracing their Pro distinction wholeheartedly, far exceeding the incremental improvements observed in the current base level offerings. This presents a remarkable opportunity for Apple to achieve widespread success on multiple fronts, it would signify a victory for Apple, as they could proudly demonstrate their cutting-edge technological advancements, engaging in healthy competition with Android's flagship offerings. Enthusiasts would also stand to gain significantly, relishing the prospect of a high-end, distinctive iPhone that sells itself apart from the rest. Additionally, this move would be advantageous for Apple, especially considering the rumors about potential price increases this year. The price point might surpass $1,100, $1,200, or even $1,300 with a significant price adjustment accompanying the phone. However, if the device boasts the anticipated technological breakthroughs, an impressive redesign, and the necessary prowess to back it all up, there is a strong belief that consumers would willingly pay the premium for these enhanced features. The scenario would result in a win-win situation. Consumers would acquire a sophisticated new phone, Apple's revenue would increase, and the iPhone's innovation quotient would experience a much-needed boost. The prevailing sentiment is a desire for Apple to infuse more innovation into the iPhone domain, a longing that has been widely expressed. As indicated by Bloomberg's market men, there is an active contemplation and effort within Apple towards this endeavor. While it appears unlikely for this transformation to occur within the current year, prospects are broader for the next potentially with the iPhone 16 lineup. Drawing inspiration from the Ultra line of the Apple Watch, there might be valuable insights to glean about the characteristics and features of this prospective iPhone iteration. Comparing it to the rest of Apple Watch series, this particular watch boasts a larger display, a bigger battery, and a fresh design. It also offers increased customization options, potentially featuring a programmable dedicated action button, in addition to the upcoming mute function on the 15 Pro model. This enhanced uniqueness and excitement might come at a slightly higher price, which many enthusiasts could find worth paying. This presents a golden chance for Apple to explore novel designs and forms, perhaps even paving the way for the introduction of a folding iPhone or the return of Touch ID under the display. An improved camera system or the introduction of a 15 Ultra Mini variant would also be highly appreciated by many. I want to make it clear that I'm not aiming to criticize Apple. I have genuine affection and admiration for their products as a devoted fan. While the iPhone 15 and 15 Pro are undoubtedly excellent devices that I plan to purchase, my thought stems from a place of wanting to see Apple push boundaries and offer even more. Not everyone may require these features, but seizing this opportunity could be truly remarkable. You don't necessarily need to make a purchase, but I believe including this in Apple's product lineup would be a strategic move. Apple consistently caters to a wide range of consumers with varying models and price options. Introducing a higher tier option above the Pro Series, albeit pricier, could cater to ultra enthusiasts like myself. This move could effectively demonstrate Apple's capabilities and align its actions with its promises. It's an opportunity for Apple to showcase the iPhone's true potential, 
I'm personally quite enthusiastic about this prospect and eagerly anticipate the unveiling of an Ultra iPhone, complete with its unique features. As always, I'm interested in your perspectives. What are your expectations for an iPhone Ultra? Are you looking forward to the 15 and 15 Pro models? Do you believe Apple is making adequate efforts? Or do you think they could strive for more? Should Apple consider returning to a Beneo major upgrade cycle? Or do you feel their current approach is satisfactory? Feel free to share your thoughts below. I'm genuinely curious about your opinions and would love to engage in a discussion. Your continued viewership is immensely appreciated. Thank you ever so much. Looking forward to the next opportunity to connect.